talk about you know writing inmates accepting phone calls from inmates you know visits all that but before I do if you're new hit that subscribe button you know, share you know, hit your notification so you'll know when the next one is coming up but you know and make a comment you know I'll, I'll answer all comments it may take me a while on some of them but I get to all of them all right let's go there's a I'm often asked if uh, prisoners you know if it helps them getting letters and stuff you know having contact and it does for most of them there's a few you know, like most of these are people with life sentences. They ain't getting out. They don't want no contact. You know, because they just don't want to deal with the emotions and stuff, you know. So they cut off their family, friends, and all that, you know. Phones, visits, all that. They don't want none of it. But most enjoy getting better. When, when I was in there... It wasn't emails until the very end, and then you had to go to a kiosk. But, you know, it was handwritten letters, and I remember everybody looked forward to getting letters, you know. And most people did. And, you know, and I was always happy when I got letter, you know. A guard came by and stuck an envelope through the, uh, the door. Or, um... And there's always like, oh man, if he went on by, oh man, nobody loves me today, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, you have some that are not grateful at all, you know. I've seen people on the phones um, just cussing out their people, you know. Send me that money, you know, and just calling them bad names and stuff, you know. Uh I need that money. You know, here's the thing. Um, you put yourself in prison. And, uh, well, in most cases you did. In some cases, you may be innocent. Or, you know, you might have been set up or whatever. But the majority of the time, most of the time, you put yourself in prison. And these people... That are sending you money, writing you and everything. They don't have to do that. So, it always aggravated me that prisoners were not appreciative of, uh, you know, people uh, sending them money, writing them and everything. You know, I always was. I mean, I was very grateful to my family and friends and anybody else who may want to write me, you know. Uh, but... There was so many people, I mean, I've seen them get, like, they're trying to threaten them over the phone, you know? So, if they don't send money, what are you going to do, you know? And then you got others that give this sob story, you know? Uh, if and, and in some cases, it may be true. Uh, uh, if I don't pay this debt off, you know, they're going to get me, you know? I'm going to be, my life is going to be in danger. Most of the time, that's, they're just saying it to try to get their people to send money. In some cases, it's true, though, you know. Went and, they went and got themselves in debt. And I'm telling you what, you go in debt, you got to pay. You got to pay. You know. And if they beat his, the person's ass that owed them, He's still going to uh, owe him, you know? And, you know, some of these people coming in nowadays think, well, you know, he he beats my, my ass, you know, whatever, it's squashed. No, it's not. You still owe that money, especially if it's a lot, you know? But 
you gotta be careful about getting on the phones too you know um in south central correctional center now like in five and six house and people are fighting over the phones so it's not like you can just walk up and get on the phone and i know this because um i know people there and they're telling me about this you know see there's a a 15 minute phone call that you get if you get on the phone you got 15 minutes then it's rigged up so you have to wait an hour you, you cannot make another phone call for an hour but what people are doing they're getting on the phone for 15 minutes and then they're using their partner's pen and getting on there for another 15 minutes you know so it's um they're staying on there a lot longer you know so there's fights and stabbings and everything else over the phone so you people that may be going to prison i hope to god you're not but if you are keep things like that in mind you know you just can't and, and you know in some places the phones are controlled you know you may have one group of people controlling phones over here and one over here and you just can't walk up on any phone you know so you, you gotta keep that in mind um visits uh like i said some people don't refuse to visit i never refuse to visit you know is my family coming up and sometimes friends you know distant relatives and stuff you know but uh i, I never refused them you know but it's a roller coaster you know because uh on visit day you know the date let's say your people say <coughs> excuse me let's say your people say well we're coming up this weekend well with me i knew they was coming up pretty much every weekend unless they said otherwise but let's say you know they said we're coming up this weekend then you're waiting you know and as it gets closer closer you know and then on the day that the, the visit's supposed to happen this is especially true for people who don't hardly get visits and the, the visits they do are coming from like out of state or something you get ready for the visit and you're sitting around waiting for your name to be called you're all ancient you know you're kind of worried because you're nervous and stuff because what if something happened you know what for some reason they couldn't make it you know it's not like you can just message them on a phone or anything, you know. Well, unless you have one. But uh, in most cases, you, you can't, you know. And uh, you ain't got cell phones or smartphones in prison. But you can't, like, message them right away and find out. You can go and get on the phone, maybe call them if you're able to. If you're late or something, you know. But, all right, then you get your visit. You know, they call your name. So you go all the way up to the visiting room. It's, in some places, it's kind of a long walk, you know. And you're kind of in a hurry, you know. You get up there, and you get strip searched. You take all your clothes off. It makes you lift your stuff up, you know, lift your arms up. Run your hand, hand through your hairs, open your mouth, turn around, squat and cough and all this and that. And then you put on these visiting room clothes just for visiting, you know. You got a little place to put your clothes, you know. And then they give you sandals or shower shoes, you know. We call them shower shoes, you know. And you go out there and see your people, you know. And you're all happy, you know. You're hugging one another, maybe a brief kiss, whatever you know you enjoy your visit but you're sitting there for and most people stay the whole time you know which is in missouri is most of the prisons is a few hours you know and you're sitting on these hard chairs and stuff and by the time and you got these bright lights you know in the ceiling and some people say it hurts their eyes it's, it's never bothered mine it's never gave me a headache or anything like that but some people said the lights bother them but i never had no problems with it but then it comes time to leave 
you know that's usually the hardest part so you leave you know they get up and leave and you say your goodbyes and everything then you go back to your cell and if you're cool with your cellie he'll probably ask you about your visit and you tell him you know and uh then you feel tired i, I always did i always feel felt exhausted and if there's a food visit day food visits is when your people can bring food in but it's got to be in seafood containers it's only four containers and they can bring food in and i think it's like four times a year and uh you get stuffed, you know, and so if you have one of those and you come back, you not only are you tired, you're, you're just stuffed, you know, and you just want to lay down. But you'll tell yourself about your visit, you know, if he asks, you know, if you're not cool with him, you probably won't say nothing. But for people who are writing, you know, looking for a pen pal, you know, I'm going to tell you that most people will write back, and most will appreciate the letters or the email or whatever, you know, and, but you got some that are just, they're not, you know, they're trying to play games, they're trying to get money and stuff you know so you gotta be careful and they'll play all kinds of tricks you know like i said they'll say that their, their life is in danger or they, they may say something like i i broke my cellies tv and i gotta pay for it here's the thing you gotta know about that at least in missouri an inmate a prisoner cannot buy another prisoner a tv with money on his books it's got to the person who who's wanting the TV has to have the money on his books. So if somebody's telling you, I broke my Sally's TV and I need money to, so he can buy another one, yeah, it don't fly because he's, he's just wanting the money for himself because he's not going to be able to buy his, uh, uh, sell you a TV unless it's, you know, he buys it from another inmate, you know, which is against the rules and they have to get their name and everything redone on you know so you gotta be careful about that you know and uh personally if i may make a in my opinion if i may say something for those of you who are uh you know have have a loved one in prison and he's talking bad to you on the phone or something you know cussing you out and stuff i wouldn't go for that i really wouldn't because he doesn't appreciate you you know uh i mean the first time he does it i may give him a chance you know he, maybe he's having a bad day or something but if he continues to do stuff like that no I just cut him off. Now, I can't understand a prisoner being mad if it's his own personal money that he has out there and nobody's sending it to him. I mean, I can understand that, you know. He's wanting his money, you know. But if he's getting mad because people are sending, not sending their own money to him, no, no. You uh, you're lucky they're even sending you anything. You're lucky you're getting visits from them, you know, letters, whatever. You know. And about the letters, I don't know how the email thing goes now, really, because you know it pretty much started after I got out in 2016. But uh, with letters, you had people that as soon as I got a letter from somebody they was writing them back i mean they was immediately they couldn't wait and they send it back off you know and they appreciated it you know they loved the letter you know they, they was happy then you have you have others that 
it's kind of funny because they'll get a letter from somebody and put off writing them back as if they're too busy. Can't understand that one, but uh, you can't be too busy. You know, there's always time. But they keep putting it off, putting it off, and then they'll say all of a sudden one day they'll say, I wonder why I haven't heard from so-and-so. Well, maybe because you haven't answered the last letter you got from that person, you know? And then you have, uh, oh, I got to tell a story. Um, I should have started this out with this story. But um, when I first got to the walls, you know, got settled in, got to know people and stuff, you know, old heads was schooling me on how to do time and everything well some of these old heads and when i mean old heads i don't mean because they already had a lot of time in i mean because they was starting to get old uh like i am now but um they uh and this is back when we had poor polar road pictures you know so it's they wasn't the best you know but um he uh these guys would pay me they would buy the ticket picture ticket and pay me also to have a photo taken and what they was doing was send them to these you know they'd find some woman that wanted to write somebody in prison and they'd young woman and they'd send this picture to them saying it was them you know and you know back then it was it was easy to do, you know. Um, it was harder to find out what somebody looked like and stuff, you know. So, I mean, after a while, I got to thinking, man, this is wrong. So I told these guys that, you know. They said, uh, well, it's all right, you know, we understand. But they said, you already get in on this. This is a hustle, man. I said, no. Nah. You know, I said, I got people out there, you know, I got people looking out for me and, um, and they said, well, whatever, you know, but, um, I could not believe that, you know, and, uh, so you're sending, you're 45, 50, 55, maybe even 60 years old and you're sending a, a photo of somebody who's 20 and saying it's you, you know. So uh, that was, uh, and just for the record, I felt real bad for doing that. You know, I, it bothered me, so I stopped, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm sorry for doing that. You know, I feel bad about it, but is that's just one of the things that prisoners do. I don't know if they still do that, but they used to, you know, anyway, that's all I got for you today. And, uh, Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And uh, see you next time. Bye.